Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Learn It All podcast. We are Damon Lemby, CEO of Learn It, Darren Bridget, VP of Product, and we are joined today by Marquez Ogden. Marcus, did I say it right? You did. Second time. The second time. Marcus. Marcus <laughs> Ogden has joined us. Let me uh, sing the praises of Marcus before we get into it. Marcus is a former NFL player. He's a founder and CEO of Ogden Ventures, LLC. Focuses on keynotes, speaking, business coaching, consulting. He's a three-time best-selling author and host of Get Authentic with Marcus Ogden podcast. Um, he's all about authenticity and overcoming adversity. And if you're tuning in today, that's what we're going to be focusing on. It's basically how can you overcome adversity? How can you use um, find your authentic self and use that to be successful in your personal and professional life. Welcome. Thanks, Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Appreciate you. Damon, how are you, sir? Marcus, um, for those of you who don't know, Marcus and I are good buddies. I was on his show. I spon learned it sponsors his show. Uh, I'm really excited. I've been looking forward to this for, for weeks. So thank you for carving out time. I know that you're a very busy, uh, very busy gentleman. So it's great to see you, buddy. Well, you know what, my friend, you're never too busy for your friends. And the minute you start thinking that, that you're too busy for your good friends, then in my eyes, you're in trouble. That's just my, how I live my life. I'm like, if you're a good friend of mine, you want my time. Hey, my time is your time. <laughs> well, thanks for uh, sharing that with us. And speaking of sharing, you've got an amazing story um, with some adversity and, and all kinds of ups and downs. Can you take us a little bit through your journey to, uh, to get to this place where you become this, um, really in demand speaker and maybe we'll spend a little more time, you know, as we get to it too, on, on that adversity piece, but, but give us, give us an overview. Yeah, so I'm from Washington, D.C. I went to St. John's College High School, the same high school that Kevin Plank, who co-founded Under Armour, went to. Went to the Howard University and played football for the Bison. My father, Sherl Ogden, went and played for the Bison. From there, I went to the National Football League. I was drafted by the Jaguars and head coach Jack Del Rio. He was one of my most phenomenal, most inspirational, most sophisticated leads I've ever played for as a coach. He was a former player, played at USC and with the Vikings, was a kick-ass coach and just a great guy and learned a ton in the NFL, played with great guys like my brother, Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, to Willis McGahee, Fred Taylor, uh, you know, Michael Griffin, you know, I can name all these phenomenal guys. And yeah. what I learned in the NFL to be able to be successful you have to be your own CEO. And Jack Dario talked about that when I was a 22 year old rookie. And he said, most of you won't make it, not because you don't have the talent to make it, but you're not gonna have the drive to push through the hard days of two a days, of going against the veterans who may not like you very much in the beginning, of having to prove yourself because you're now you're not in college. The veterans don't care what you did at Ohio State, Michigan, Howard, Bethune, Cookman, doesn't matter. They want to see you come to the Jaguars and to these other teams and compete. For example, I had a phenomenal call with one of the NFL teams, great guys. He is their director of player engagement. We were chatting about what would I love to tell the players of his team if they were to hire me? And I told him, I said, man, I would love to talk about how that you as a player today need to work like the players of old. You need to have that attitude that I'm not just going to be handed. And here's the thing, like, you know, NIL, all these things, and I, hey, last, you can, if you can make money, that's great. Not saying that's a bad thing. But what needs to happen, if you make money in college, high school, whatever, that's great. But come to the NFL, whatever sport you play, with that humble attitude, I'm going to work my butt off. What I did in high school, what I did in college, what I made in high school, what I made in college, that means nothing. Work hard. And that's what I learned in the NFL. So from there, got out. I struggled immensely. I got hooked on alcohol, addiction, nightlife, women, gambling, things really, really bad. I then founded Caden Premier Enterprises, which was our construction company. Grew it to an eight-figure year business. And then unfortunately, as the company grew, my bravado, my desire to feel I was always right, my desire to feel I was always the best grew just as big with it. And it cost me some great employees. It cost me some great structure. It cost me a lot of money. And that with a really, really bad job, 
I went bankrupt in 2013, uh, March, February, March, and I had to move to Raleigh in April 2013 with only $400 to my name. Got here, had a couple different jobs, fired from two jobs in the same week. I had to work as a custodian downtown Raleigh, and I tell everybody, everybody in life has had a rock bottom moment, everybody. The question is, did you learn from the rock bottom moment? And I had mine as a custodian, I call it my spoiled milk moment. Somebody's trash, rotten meat, nasty, horrible smelling garbage <laughs> got all over me, all over me. Yeah. September mm -hmm. 2013, and I made the decision after cleaning myself up and crying for about 10 minutes that I need to turn my life around with accountability, mm -hmm. responsibility, and aligning what I want to do on the inside with what I'm going to do on the outside. I say, mm -hmm. let's start speaking. Started speaking, didn't get a paid job for two and a half years. Yeah. Got my first paid job in April 2016. Got coached, got developed grew it i've done been speaking now for so many organizations you name it but then i got hit again with adversity when i had to file for divorce in july of 2022 unexpectedly mm -hmm. i got hit with it even harder when i was forced to move out of my home and go into an apartment for seven and a half months the apartment was dark it was dingy it was outdated but i didn't have much of a choice we made a deal and I had two weeks to get out. That's all I had. Found a place, was in a bad place. Finally, January, 2023, overcame that, that mindset of negativity. I had a mindset shift. I got myself back on track. I worked hard, I developed myself. And now I bought my dream home about eight and a half, nine months ago, May of 2023. Business is booming. I'm out dating again. I'm trying to get my life back. I'm co-parenting. I'm doing all these things. But my point is, everybody, this guy said, oh my God, you spoke of all these companies. That's gotta be amazing. How's your life? It's gotta be phenomenal. Well, not really. I mean, I had to go through a divorce. I had to give up half my assets. I had to pay a lot of debt. I had to move into a, a, a two bedroom, dirty, dingy apartment. I had to start over. And people don't understand, like, that's life. Life is just not going to say, hey, doo -doo 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 -doo, right, yep. Darren, doo -doo -doo -doo, right, yeah, Damon, perfect. that's just not going to yeah. stay, stay straight line. Yeah. It's not. That's always no, going to land, right, Marcus? If yeah. you're not going to be ready to be strategically agile and pivot when necessary, you will never reach your full potential in life, period. It's a great story. Um, I and one of the things I appreciate about about in the story that you just shared right there too, and we talked about this a little beforehand, is your willingness to share the failures because it's so easy, especially this social media, Instagram world. Like everybody kind of hides their failures all the time, and look at me, everything's great all the time, and um, and you you don't have that mindset, and you don't coach people that way either too. It's like you've got to like be willing to take some chances, make some mistakes, learn from them those mistakes, and not and and be essentially authentic. Mm -hmm. um so well i mean here's the thing right in life you have to take measured decision chances and do measured decision making right when i was fired from both jobs in the same week everybody said marcus just go do football go coach go do what you need to do you're in ogden go get a high school job and maybe work with ranks to college and then maybe try to go from there and progress. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I tell everybody that is really an awesome thing if you think, but I know what it's like. I don't want to be working, you know, 13, 14 hour days, you know, eight, nine, 10 months of the year with only really mm -hmm. one month off. I don't want to be traveling out recruiting, going places. I don't want that. I had a young child. My daughter was just born. And I did work at Campbell University as an offense defense analyst for coach Mike Minter, who played at Nebraska and played for the Panthers, was a phenomenal strong safety. And I remember when Mike called me actually on my birthday, I've never talked about this on the podcast before, on my birthday, Mike texted me. He said, hey, how are you, man? I thought he was texting me, happy birthday. I'm like, man, coach knows my birthday. That's awesome. He said, <laughs> happy birthday. Oh, and by the way, I need a kick-ass old line coach to come and get these guys in order and get them in, and get them ready to roll and play guy. And you're my guy. You want to come coach me at Campbell? That was 2021 in November. And I said, you know what? Speaking was going well, but no, it was still challenging. And some mm -hmm. things were happening in my marriage. So it's kind of like, hmm, this could be a good thing for me. But I was like, 
you know, no, like that's not for me. And, you know, I don't want that. You know, I don't want to go that route. And anything that you're going to have to really get in life, you're going to have to work for, right? I've been speaking for now, what, 10 and a half years. Nothing came easy. Nothing. Not my first job, not my first paid job, not my first consulting job, not my first you know, sponsor of the podcast. I mean, Damon sponsors our podcast, which is going phenomenal. Damon and I talk weekly. Hey, yep. Damon, here's this athlete, here's that athlete. You know, we really deliver that service to our sponsors and to our partners and to our clients. But I just didn't want to go that route. So my point yeah. is, is that in life, you're going to have to make some decisions. And again, nobody, almost nobody, thought I would be successful as a speaker. They said, Marcus, this is not for you. You don't have the talent. You don't have what it takes. You know, you don't have the story. You don't know how to read people. I mean, I heard it all. I just kept going and going. And now here we are speaking yeah. for all these. I've worked for 55 plus Fortune 500 brands in eight years, 15 Fortune 100, best-selling yeah. author, podcast host, you name it. But I've also been a guy that's made no money. I've yeah. been a guy that's broke. I've been yeah. a guy that's had to move into an apartment when he really didn't want to. Yeah. I was a guy that was really, it's, this is 2022 December, who had a horrible Christmas. I was more like the Scrooge and the Grinch. <laughs> and then I didn't want to be around anybody, right? So yeah. life is just not easy. I mean, like there's a lot that goes through this. So again, if you're mm -hmm. listening, you have to learn to kind of like pivot and be agile and be strategic in your movement. Yeah. Marcus, I got a question. For, I mean, I've, I have so many questions for you, <laughs> even though we're buddies and we've talked about a lot of this, but when that call came in from Campbell and you were mm -hmm. offered this like really good job, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of people, especially in the situation you're at that time would just jump at it, mm -hmm. but you knew it wasn't what you wanted to do. What advice do you have for our listeners who may be in a similar situation where, they're struggling. Maybe they're dealing with imposter syndrome. This opportunity comes along. It's not really what they want, but how do they have the courage to do what you did? Say no, because saying no it by itself is very difficult to, to stay focused on what you wanted to do. So what I tell people is, is the offer that you're receiving in full alignment with your vision and your long-term strategy. If the answer is yes, then you go for it. The answer is no, don't go near it. Because here's the thing, right? God is awesome. He gives us so much. But one thing he gives us is free will. We make our own choices. And so Campbell was a great opportunity right there in my face. But it didn't align with my long-term vision. It didn't align with my long-term goals. I coached when I got here trying to figure out what I wanted to do. And then I coached there and I realized there was a lot of things that I didn't like about coaching, the politics, mm -hmm. the hours, the things that were needed. I was just not willing to, I love to teach the game, but I didn't want to deal with the, all the other stuff. So it wasn't a good fit for me. And speaking really was always in alignment with my long-term vision as mm -hmm. soon as I realized after hitting rock bottom that I was my biggest enemy and that I caused my failure and my demise. And once I accepted that, I said, I want to help others succeed in life where I failed. I want to help others have triumph where I had failure. And I want to help others move strategically, successfully where I stumbled fell and fell flat on my face. So everything I'm doing now is in alignment with my vision of helping others, not just a certain group of people. It's the masses speaking, mm -hmm. coaching, consulting, mm -hmm. podcasting, going on podcasts, brand ambassador, you know, all these things, helping people get on great shows like this. That's what the alignment with what I want for myself for the long haul. But uh, listeners, they all, um, but people also have to understand and be self-aware of 
look, I might want to be the lead singer of of the Killers, but I don't have the talent to do so. You know, you you have to be self aware as well to make sure that your passion is something that you can be good at, right? That you can actually oh, yeah. make, I mean, got to make money you, at. You you have to. What I tell people all the time is, okay, you have to support yourself, right? So if I want to go out and be Axl Rose from Guns N' Roses, there that's go. not going to happen. That's just <laughs> not going to happen, right? And right. I can't do that. I can't be Usher up there, you know, jamming on stage for the Super Bowl, crushing it. I mean, I can't do that, right? I can't right. be Lil Wayne rapping. That's I can't do that. So what I tell people is, number one, figure out what is what you want to do, right? Vision-wise. Number two, do you have any sort of skill sets in that vision to actually make money from it? Three, are you willing to do the work that's necessary to get to where you want to get to if you are aligned vision-wise and you have the talent? Because talent's not enough. It's yeah. not. It's not enough. You know, I'm a talented speaker. Yes, I've learned over the years how to craft my story, but that's not, I don't just sit back and say, oh, I'm a talented speaker, hire me, thank you. You know, or go somewhere, okay, everybody, here I am, you know, come bring me, bring me all the offers for speaking. Yeah, yeah I'll just, I'll okay. talk to you here, I'll talk. No, man, like, it is work. Our team puts out content, newsletters, blogs, our podcast, me going on podcasts, Outreach. Yeah, I tell you before, right there, I'm, I'm on this patch product, which is amazing. I'm doing a, uh, I'm doing a Zoom tonight from 8:30 to 9. Usually, I play poker on Thursday, but I don't have my daughter, right? But you know what? This is work late. I love the patches. It's turned my life around, giving me more energy, more clarity, more focus. So I got to take a little time to help do what? Talk about it to people who are maybe thinking about doing, but they haven't done it yet. So maybe a guy like me who's doing on day 25 saying, I'm feeling great and I'm feeling phenomenal. And here's where I'm at will help people. Right. But at the end of the day, you got to do what you know you have skills at. You know that you can financially take care of yourself. And three, do you have the drive? Right. Do you have the grit? You know what yeah. I mean? Do you yeah. have, I mean, uh, for example, you know, uh, Carl Weathers passed away, you know, Apollo from Rocky. He was a phenomenal football player, played for the Raiders. And he talked about getting that shot with Rocky and how that helped him get his career launch. Same yeah. thing Dolph Lundgren said when he got hired for Rocky IV. Then Rocky IV, he went into, he did He-Man and he did The Punisher. And then from there, he became a name and he started doing Expendables and all this stuff. Is he a phenomenal actor? No. Is he a good actor? Yeah. yeah. I've always liked Dolph yeah. Lundgren in his movies. Yeah. I mean, he yeah. like Red Scorpion, I mean, he does. And again, you said it right, Damon, he sticks to what he's good at. Red Scorpion, you know, The Punisher, you know, he is that action actor and he made a name for himself but it started with him he even said going to that audition and doing the best he could to stand out for the character he did it and he stepped out of his comfort zone and he tried to act with a russian accent because he's actually swedish and yeah. by doing so it won over Sylvester stallone and the cast and boom he gets put in his drago bam yeah. he goes off to have a phenomenal career in what he does same story that's good so marcus it seems like kind of following your passion but combining that with understanding what your lanes are so so there's a kind of like a realistic approach but you're still letting your passions drive you you know like what you want to do which gives you the ability to say no and stay focused um along the way i mean this, you know you don't get a degree in what you're doing in school you kind of have to figure that out in the real world and I, i'm getting the sense that um you you would place a lot of value on learning from your experience, like lived experience. My my background is an actor, and I, we always could say it like you learn on the boards, which is like learning on stage instead of just in a in a in a classroom somewhere. You learn by doing. You also had to learn some stuff to do this. Like so, speaking of learning, like where did you go look for help to 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 do the career that you're doing now? So it's very interesting. So I started speaking in September 2013 got our first paid job in April, 2016. And I'll never forget Andre Collins, who was, and still is my mentor. Andre played in the NFL, played at Penn State, played with the Washington Redskins, now Commanders, the Chicago Bears, who's a great outside linebacker. Andre was head of the players, uh, the Retired Player Foundation in DC. And he said, Marcus, there is this program called NAPSA, 
National Athletic Professional Success Academy. And it's having an inaugural program. They have requested seven former players. You are the first one they wanted to have come to the program. And I told Andre, I said, Andre, thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm not going to go. He said, Marcus, you need to go. You're good, but you're not great. I said, Andre, I appreciate it. I just can't take time away. And I said, Marcus, look, you go to the place, give it your all, do well, graduate. I'll hire you to come and speak for us in Miami and do a job for us to tell your story. And if you do that, and then we can move forward. And I said, Andre, fine. Went to the program, best thing I ever did. As a matter of fact, I still even have, give me one moment. I still, this, I, I got this binder in 2018. When I came back, I, we moved five or six times between like, you know, we went to a town home, then we were trying to buy a house, then that fell through. Then I had to move back to my in-laws and then we moved from my in-laws back to my, to my, to my rental town home, then we bought a town home. Then I moved out of that when I left from my, to the crappy apartment. Then I left that to go to my dream home. This binder is still with me everywhere I go. I love this it. is my NAPSA binder and NAPSA taught me how to turn my okay average career into where it is now and where it's continuing to go. I learned from this book how to take my football skill sets, my past lingo, my knowledge, and turn it into corporate lingo, how to relate to people, how to do business. And if you're listening to this and you want to be successful in life and in business, if you can't speak people's language to make them feel comfortable that you can deliver what they're looking for, you will starve. And I was starving because I was talking, but it was in a language that mm -hmm. people weren't comfortable with to pay mm -hmm. me any type of real money. Yeah. Now they're comfortable because I know I can not only, am I hardworking, am I diligent, am I gonna see things through, but I can talk your language, I understand you, you understand me, Let's work together. Yeah. Marcus, I got a question for you. This is <clears throat> kind of random, but you did a keynote. You came out to San Francisco and you did a keynote for my friend's company and absolutely mm -hmm. crushed it. Mm -hmm. And the I got a lot of text messages, but one that kind of stood out was from my friend Britt. And he said, Damon, Marcus knew everybody's name in the room. And he's like, it shocked it. It made everybody feel really good. Do you have a tip for us speakers out there or, or just people in general? How do you how do you remember in that case, like 60, 70 people's names? <laughs> so what I do is I have a really good memory. And what I do is when I hear people and I see what they're and I kind of see some, what they're saying, what they're wearing, and I kind of hear who they are and they tell me, boom. And then when I ask people, hey, you know, what is your name? Every time I talk to somebody, that is how we start out building that trust. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so building relationships plus building trust equals loyalty. And when you're working with people, especially the type of intimate group that we did, there was a great event that was put on phenomenal. The more you actually connect with people through saying their name and not just saying, Hey, you, or ha ha, yeah. or Hey, this, yeah. or Hey, that, you know, it makes them feel special. I did a job in Minneapolis, but about 200 people. I didn't remember everybody's name, but I remember what everybody talked about. Like people talk yeah. about, well, I want to see this. I want to see the sun or the beach. I, I want to go to Vail and ski. Or one of the guys like, well, I want to go to the cabin and, and, and have like nature and peace. And so I remembered what people were talking about that made them feel in their serenity or their happy place. And it's interesting when I got divorced and moved into my new development, I live in a place called Serenity, which is crazy. And I live on serendipity drive, which is even crazier. And so as a result, <laughs> I've learned how to really connect with people by just yeah. doing that little thing like, hey, who are you? What's your name? What do you like? And it's that little bit of thing. And then I put it in my mind. And then from there, I just always know when I speak to somebody at an event, either who they are, what they like, or what really gets them excited. It's amazing. Um, it's something I need to get better at having failed immediately and getting your name wrong in the beginning, which I'm still embarrassed about. But um, anyway, moving on. Um, the uh, 
I think, you know, some, you're, so a couple of things that, that seem interesting to me with the people that you work with, because you do a lot of coaching and consulting, you're in the business world, come from the sports world, because you're authentic and you're willing to share, you know, um, your own experiences and be vulnerable with people because you're, you take a very curious, real interest in people. And like you just described, learning what they're all about. I think that people must open up to you pretty well. So oh, yeah. all of a sudden you're in this like corporate world coaching people and they're kind of opening up and being really honest. I guess I'm curious from your background, what are you kind of seeing in the business world these days? How, how do you, if you, if you're like taking the temperature of the business world, this moment in time, what, what are people struggling with? What do you, without obviously giving away anything personal, just kind of. Yeah, I mean, people are struggling with, I mean, this is a good question, Dan. People are struggling with making money. Yeah. They really are. I mean, it's hard out here. It really is. And I tell people all the time, if I would have started my company like 2019, 20, wow, it'd be a lot different right now because it's like people want to spend money, but you have to go the umpteenth above and extra, extra mile to prove the value that you're going to bring that's gonna far exceed the price point that you're charging. So people right now are really and truly struggling to make money. I have clients that are realtors in the mortgage business, yeah. uh, construction, restaurant, uh, you know, memorabilia, all these. It's really tough. It people really are just is. Getting squeezed, huh? They're getting squeezed. Yeah. getting squeezed and i tell people and if you're listening really really put this to heart in action marketing is the most important factor you need to do for any business that's why i love doing podcasts it's another mm -hmm. form of marketing but listen to this and one of my clients told me this on monday and she's 100 percent right she heard it at a conference right now you need to be marketing 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 the first half of this year once the second half of the year comes and the election comes into play, people are going to get drowned out by political messaging, mm -hmm. everything, all the time, everywhere. So your marketing will not go as far in the second half of the year as it will now. So mm -hmm. if you have the ability to get on podcasts, media, get out there, put out content, do it, do it now and get out there now, because again, it's only going to get harder to make money as we get into the last half of the year when mm -hmm. your marketing won't be as much seen, won't be mm -hmm. as much heard. And from there, you're fighting to what? Get that eyeball on your product. That is, uh, Marcus, that is a great point that I didn't really think about, you know, but that is a that is a great point. Question for you. You, you just mentioned, you know, how people are struggling, right? You know, and, and that's true. One of the things I was thinking about is guys like me and you, we're open. You know, we're not afraid to just say what it is, right? But there are, you know, there's some people I coach, mentor, and just people I know in general who are so guarded, you know, and so private, and they're so worried about what other people think. And a lot of times I think that that really limits their ability to learn and grow. It, it, how do you, what do you recommend for those people to, 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 become how do you become more vulnerable how do you let your guard down and and not be afraid especially when you're struggling to ask for help or ask for advice i know too many people who are afraid to to do that because it makes them they feel like they're, they're going to be weak if they do that ladies and gentlemen live by this saying i actually have a, we have a keynote on this vulnerability creates connectivity vulnerability creates connectivity I don't want to work with someone who hasn't gone through the struggle. I don't want to put my money with somebody that hasn't failed. Warren Buffett says it best. He will never invest in a business owner that hasn't failed at least three times. This is my fourth <laughs> company. I failed in construction. I failed in the clothing business and I failed in a, in a consulting business. This is our fourth company that we've done over the years. Yeah. Finally, we're getting it right because I've learned how to let go. I've learned how to, when you hire somebody, you have to trust them. 
One of my team members said, Marcus, she's of course at my house on Thursday. Hey, Marcus, something happened at my other job. She does some part-time work at a salon. There's some issues at the salon. Can I work from home? I need to go into the, to the salon at two. I said, absolutely. Just do what you do. I've been with you for, you've been with me for years. Take care. If you need me, text me. If you're not, then I'll talk to you later on. No big deal. My virtual assistant, same thing. My podcast production people, same thing. You know, my people to help with my podcast, everybody, same thing, same thing, right? You know, you can, it's like in a relationship. If you try to be a controlling person mm -hmm. to a spouse, mm -hmm. it's going to push them away. Mm -hmm. I try to control everybody at Caden. They eventually got tired of it, pushed away, right? Mm -hmm. And in life, I see people try to control people, they've been pushed away. And now, when I'm leading people and owning our business, if you're on my team and I'm paying you, I don't need to like be on top of you. I don't need to be like, what are you doing? What have you done? I'll see it. I'll see it through like what you're supposed, I mean, I know what you're supposed to be doing. I have a list and you have a list of things to get done, but you know, I can check a list. I know what needs to have, what something's been done, happened. I can see everything, right? As a leader, you need to see everything, but not speak on mm -hmm. everything, mm -hmm. right? See yeah. it. Yeah. You don't have to speak on it, right? And so, again, vulnerability creates connectivity. The more vulnerable you are, the better off you're going to be. Look at all the great speakers. Les Brown, Tony Robbins, Jim Rohn, John Maxwell, Brendan Bouchard. I go down the list, right? All these guys, right? And girls, right? You know, all these phenomenal people. They're open about their failures. Mm -hmm. They are, right? They really are. And when you see them today, they're very, very successful and fulfilled, but it took them years to get there. You don't see that. And yeah. so you're like, oh, I want to be like Rob. I'm like, okay, well, that's great. Do you want to yeah. go through what Tony went through? You want, I want to be Marcus Hodge. Okay, you want to live in a nice house? Got it. Do you yeah. want to go through having $4 in your bank account? Not sure if you can make next month's bills, having to go to a food pantry and eat out of a food pantry. Do you want to talk about how you have to like, when you go to a store, you have to pray that the credit card or the bank card. I mean, I remember that. I remember when I was like moving down here to Raleigh and leaving Baltimore, mm -hmm. my ex-wife would call me. The credit cards didn't work. This didn't work. You know, it's maxed out. And I would call the credit card company and then move, uh, you know, $100 so we could buy groceries. And then she ran it again to get done. Or there were times I remember where we couldn't run it. We couldn't run it. And somebody behind her actually paid for her groceries because she, we couldn't afford it. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah. I've been there. You know what yeah. I mean? So I know what it's like. Yeah. So again, ladies and gentlemen, vulnerability creates connectivity. And learn, and I heard what you said in there too. It's, you got to learn how to let go. Yeah. Let go and, 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 and not be afraid to ask for help or advice because you can't know everything all the time. No, yeah. no. <laughs> No. This this all feels like uh, it kind of connects to the idea of authenticity, which is one of those big big banner ideas for you. And I and it, you know because that's being real. It, it's like, that means that you're willing to own the whole story, not just share the parts that you want to share. Um, and 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 a lot of people like authenticity sounds good. People say, yeah, I want to be authentic, but it, it sometimes it gets passed around like just a word without people really like grabbing a hold of what it means. And so I guess for you, what like what. What is what is what is it about authenticity and what makes it so powerful for people to to lean into? I have one teeny little follow up to that, which is I think sometimes people with authenticity think that it means like I'm going to be real. But then that also means I can be however I want to be like I don't have to. As long as I'm authentic doesn't mean I don't have to improve anymore. Oh, authenticity is being who you are in the moment, mm -hmm. knowing the moment is going to change. That's what it is. Yeah. You ask, it's interesting, right? You know, uh, I got into it with my ex-wife. You know, we had a little disagreement yeah. and I told my sister, you know, I still have love for my ex-wife. I mean, you know, yeah. we were married for seven years with her for 10 and yeah. I still do love her. Now yeah. I told her, my sister, said, look, don't ask me how I feel about her right now because it's not <laughs> going to be a good answer because yeah. we got into a fight and that, you know, that's what it is, but that's how it is. And you ask me about how I feel about her today. She's yeah. fine. She's great. And we have no, you know, so like, it's, it's, it's not the same, you know, yeah. authentically, how was I in the apartment? Crappy, yeah. upset, yeah. mad every day, hating life. Why me? Poor me in my house, blessed, grateful, 
all that. Doesn't mean I wasn't blessed or grateful when I was in my apartment, but mm -hmm. that's not how I was feeling. That was not my primary feeling at the time because I was so overshadowed by the negativity, the, uh, the, the darkness, the obstacles. I couldn't see past that. Yeah. Now I'm more grateful. I have you know, so appreciation. I'm in my house right now. There's one, two, there's, there's five, there's eight windows on the first floor of my house. I have a big master skylight. I bought a 3,100 square foot home by myself yeah. after being forced to move out of yeah. my home seven and a half months after having to file for divorce in July. Mm -hmm. I moved out November 1st. So authenticity is not about saying, oh, I feel great all the time or this all the time. Oh, no, 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 that's not true, right? What it is is feeling and knowing how you are in the moment and being honest with yourself in that moment mm -hmm. and not trying to cover it up, not trying to be something just to appease others. And that was a big problem I had in my marriage. I was constantly trying to appease others. My ex, her family, her parents, her friends, trying to fit in, trying to let things go, trying to do this. And I changed and I lost who I was. I did, I lost who I was. And it's not her fault, it's my fault, it's my fault. Yeah. And maybe if I would have stood my ground, maybe we'd still be married today. I don't know. But you know what? I wasn't authentic. I was in the moment being somebody that I thought that she wanted me to be so I could have a happy marriage. And the problem was I turned who I really was off mm -hmm. and I never cut it back on until I left. And now where I'm at, much happier. And again, I'm not a controlling person. Do you. You know what I'm saying? Do you have yeah. a great life? I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Do you? And yeah. we'll be friends. What well, doesn't matter to me? I'm not gonna control anybody. This is your life. But if yeah. you wanna be part of my life, don't try to change me. Yeah. That's all I ask, right? Mark, we wanna be great friends. Just don't try to change me. I won't try to change you. We'll be, we'll be, we'll get along great. Yeah. Marcus, uh, speaking of authentic, uh, and I wanna get this in because I know we're gonna come up on time soon. You have one of the top podcasts in the world called Get Authentic. And I know one of the services, and this is a little bit from a selfish perspective, but one of your your new services that you do is is helping other you know people launch their podcast, right? Can you mm -hmm. talk to us a little bit? One, first of all, listeners, you got to check out Get Authentic. That's an amazing podcast. But can you tell us a little bit? And you can talk about what your podcast if you want. But I'm kind of curious about your podcast services that I know that you're out working with people on. So we have a podcast profit workshop that you can sign up for. If you're trying to start a podcast, grow a podcast, sustain a podcast, and most importantly, monetize a podcast. Now, if you have a bunch of money, you're doing a podcast for a hobby, phenomenal. Most people are not like that. 75% of people never make it past episode 10 because they burn out, nobody's mm -hmm. listening, and they just throw it in the towel. And I'm sorry, ladies and gentlemen, nothing's going to come that quick. Nothing. Nothing. So in the podcast profit workshop, we teach you how to market, how to scale, how to, if you don't have a production team, you can, you can buy part of the package and get production services from our awesome partner, multi-format network. If you're wanting to scale the podcast for branding, marketing, you know, digitizing, you know, funnels, copy, all that, my partner, Victor is the master at scaling. I'm the guy that helps you with like how to create questions, how to get guests, how to get ratings, how to get reviews, how to line up your stuff, how to make sure that you're staying on consistency, you're staying on schedule. And again, right, Dame, it's about helping you to be able to also close sponsors, right? There's a secret weapon that everybody has. I don't care if you're a starting out podcast or you're Joe Rogan. We all have this secret weapon but 99% of podcasters don't use it. And because of that, they don't monetize. So we have the Podcast Profit Workshop, and if looking just for coaching on how to like grow a podcast from like, you know, what I do, then I have a program for that if you don't need the scaling part. But most people that come to us neither eat all of it, which is production, the branding, scaling, and how to run a show, and some people just need like the branding, scaling, and how to run a show. And if you just want to help on, on how to run a show, 
you can hit me up for that as well. But again, we are dedicated to helping people sustain and launch and grow a podcast and especially, right, Damon, monetize a podcast. Because a podcast, if you're not getting money, it could be a very expensive hobby. <laughs> yeah. And, and I assume part of the launching, because I think some people just want to know where to start and what the podcast should be about, right? So I assume you help them with their their true oh, north, yes. or their, oh, their yes. north star. One, yeah. one of our one of our clients, Damon, just started had his shot his first podcast yesterday. His podcast is called Wealth and Whiskey, and he's a client. And he just had his first interview yesterday. I'm proud of him. He came to us with the concept. We helped him flush it out, mm -hmm. get his Definitely. name, how to create the description, how to do all the show notes. And now he's going to help shoot five episodes and he'll put out his first one probably in a few yeah. weeks. Nice. Marcus, we have, a, we have a final question we like to ask people, but of all our guests, you might be the toughest one to answer this because you're, 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 su you're such an open book. Um, so imagine, you know, a lot of people on our, our show, maybe they don't know you so well, and they've learned a lot about you in this episode. We'd like to ask people, what's something uh, that people, a lot of people wouldn't expect or don't know about you? Um, something that people wouldn't expect or wouldn't know about me is that I have a huge love for like the arts and like, you know, like theater. So mm -hmm. I love Broadway. I love, you know, um, things like Family of the Opera, Wicked, Cats. What's your favorite um, one? Uh, uh, Family of the Opera. Okay. Mine's I Les Mis. Les Mis is good. I also like I also like Wicked a lot. Wicked's a close yeah. second. So, okay. you know, and I also, I'm a big lover of like, you know, the arts, like going to art museums, looking at, yeah. you know, pictures. Um, and, and also people wouldn't know, I'm a really, really big lover of like, of like history. Like yeah. I like looking at things like, um, you know, uh, like, you know, like the dinosaurs, like, uh, you know, I was watching yeah. it called like the, the 10 deadliest beasts, like, you know, Megalodon's number one and Tyrannosaurus yeah. Rex and <laughs> like the, the big, the huge yeah. crocodile. It was like, uh, like seven times the size of our biggest crocodile today and like all this other stuff and like this yeah. huge scorpion. I mean, so, you know, I'm kind of into like, you know, that, like, you know, history like that. And then like, you know, like the arts and, you know, and going to like museums. And then I'm also big into like, you know, going to like, you know, Broadway musical and stuff like that that's awesome. awesome yeah so one of the places people might run into you is at a museum or at a play Cor but correct. another way people can get in touch with you if they want to you know hire you out as a speaker do some coaching or consulting or something what's the best couple, way a couple different ways one you can go to our app we have the marcus ogden app m-a-r-q-u-e-s-o-g-d-e-n it's uh, if you have an apple phone or an android go to your app store Click in, uh, type in my name, and boom, you can, you can download our. It's a free app. We have exclusive content. You can connect with our podcast there and our website. You can send me an email, marcus at marcusogden.com, or you can just go to our website, www.marcusogden.com. Email us, go to our website, download our app, connect with us. We'd love to talk to you. Those awesome. will all be in the show notes. Yeah. Marcus, I think I can't imagine somebody embodying what authenticity truly means more than you. Like you just, you showcase the potential of everything that that word means, not just the abstract idea of it. Thanks so much for being on the show. You're awesome, Appreciate Marcus. It. Thank You're you, awesome, Thanks for having me on. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave with this. Authenticity creates victory. If you want to be successful in life, authenticity creates victory. The more authentic you are, the more victorious you will be in life. And that is a fact. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks so much. Thank you.